We've been looking at various ways Excel can help us expand our use of the WordPress pages on our website, and by now have covered quite a lot of ground. In the last video we saw how to set up Excel to access the web and populate tables of data in our worksheet, which we could then add to our web pages. We finished with a suggestion we might be able to automate the whole process, including uploading files to our web directories from within Excel, rather than through an external FTP client such as FileZilla, which does not allow scheduled uploading. Before we start, though, we'll need to use an FTP client like FileZilla to set up a directory in our WordPress website. By the way, for our purposes, Windows folders and web directories are the same thing. A login and go to WP content, and then if not already created from an earlier video, create a directory called PHP folder, and in that, create another practice directory called FTP folder. We're going to have a look at a routine in Excel's Visual Basic Editor which can upload multiple files without our attending to it, and we've called it FTP Uploader. As usual, we've declared some variables. The first is the local file path to the folder on the computer our files for upload are held in. And then three strings to hold the address of our FTP server, our FTP username, and our password. Finally, we're going to create an object to run our own FTP client. We'll look at that more closely in a minute, but basically an object is a computing construct which can do things and also has some properties which we can see and change. We've set the local file path to the same folder, PHP folder, we used in previous videos. And as on our web server, we've also added another folder called FTP folder with a few text files to practice with. Dealing with stuff like this can be a bit like lighting firecrackers, so it's a good idea to keep everything else out of the way. If you have a WordPress site and haven't done much setup work with FTP before, you must have the next bits of FTP information handy, and we'll probably find them in the documentation sent to you by your web host when you set up your website. Now we'll add the details for the FTP server address, our username and password. Okay, so let's be clear what we're trying to do. The first thing we need is an instruction file with all our details in it which we can pass over to our FTP application to execute. We'll create this text file called FTP upload text and output it through channel 1 into our PHP folder. And then we'll print out into the file, line by line, our instructions starting with lines for our FTP username and password. The third line starts off with an FTP command, that's the letter C and D, which tells the remote FTP server to change the destination directory of our files to the folders we created earlier. The next line is going to tell the FTP client where we've stored those files on our own computer. The LCD command means change local directory. The ASCII command will inform the remote server that the incoming files will be text-based. So that could include text files and script files such as HTML and PHP. If they were image or executable files, we would put binary instead. The next weird looking line needs a bit of explanation. Normally we would probably upload one file at a time, in which case we would use the command put. But here we want to upload many at a time, and that's what the command mput does. The M is for many. But to speed things up, we don't want to bother about individual file names, so we use one of the wildcard symbols, the asterisk, which signifies any number of characters. In this case, it's saying to the FTP client, send all the files in our local folder which have the text file extension, but no others. Also notice the single quotes around our wildcard file name. This is to overcome an old problem with file names which have spaces in them. If you leave the quotes out, only the first word of a file name will be used and consequently no real file will be found. 
And now we have two end commands. The first tells the remote server that's all for now, and the second shuts off the FTP client. And as we finish creating our FTP upload text file, we can close that off as well. So where are we up to now? Well, we've created a file of instructions for our FTP client, and now we need to start it up. Long before Windows, Mice and Graphics, all a PC had was an empty screen and a flashing arrow prompt daring you to do something. The MS-DOS command line interpreter, which for those of a certain age will either bring back waves of nostalgia or, more likely, dread. And underneath many layers of Windows, it still sleeps, and we're going to wake it up to activate its FTP client. To do this, we're going to create a shell object, which we need to activate applications outside Excel. We'll call this object WS shell. And notice how when we create an object, we use the word set with the equal sign. We'll run it and pass the instruction file FTP load we've just created to it. And if all goes well, our remote server will understand our commands and receive our files without any problems. Before we do that, we need to add a couple of switches. They're those single letters N and I, which switch off auto login and prompting between files. The S colon specifies the location of our FTP upload file, which will direct the whole FTP process. Obviously, we need the FTP server address and that comes next and we'll include a visual basic option as to whether we see the command line window or not. We'll let it be visible for now and hide it when everything seems to be working okay. The last property true is very important. For security's sake we want to delete our FTP upload file with all our FTP access details and passwords when we're finished with it. We can easily lock up Excel and Visual Basic files away from prying eyes, but it's not so easy to do with ordinary files and folders. But if we set our FTP client going and then delete FTP upload whilst it's uploading files, we'll have a file handling failure. So the reasons we're using the relatively complicated WS shell object is because we want Visual Basic to wait until all our files have been uploaded and adding the property true is how we do that. Finally, when the file transfer is over, we kill our instruction file. So here it is working. Again, it's pretty fast, so there's not much to see. What you can see, however, is that our practice files are now in our FTP folder directory on our web server. If you look to the last video, you may remember how we used Excel query tables to automatically download data from the internet to produce Excel tables. Our final words were, what we needed now was a way of uploading this data to our web server automatically as well. Well, in the next video, we'll show you how to combine scheduled downloads from the web, extract data, and upload that data to your website all in one automatic go. In the meantime, thanks for watching.